In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the timing track functionality built into Xlights. Now I've already done a video how to create timing tracks in Audacity. So I'm going to cover the inbuilt functionality here. Now we can break down the timing tracks into three main types. These are going to be lyrics, fixed timing tracks, and variable timing tracks. Now, regarding the lyrics, I've done several videos on lyric timing tracks, and they're quite a specialized timing track. So I'm not going to cover those in here, but I suggest you watch the videos on lyrics. So what are timing tracks? So let's look here. We can see the timing track here, functionality here, where it says new timing. Now, if I right click on here, First option I've got is the ability to add a timing track. So I'm going to select that. Now, if you're in an animated sequence, you will see these options right down here, 25, 50, 100 milliseconds, metronome and empty. You will not see these because these are only useful for musical, you know, if you've got audio in your sequence. Also, you will only see these if you've installed the appropriate plugin. Now, let me cover these timing tracks first, the fixed timing tracks. So I'm going to create one here, the 100 millisecond timing track. And you can see we have timing marks that are created. And it's called a fixed timing track because it cannot be selected or moved. If you, see, if you see here, I cannot select this, I cannot alter this in any way. It is fixed at 100 milliseconds. Now, if for whatever reason you wanted to be able to move this, there is the ability built in to make this fixed timing track into a variable timing track. So if we right click on here, you can see we've got the ability here, make timing track variable. And now if I click this, you can see the color has changed. And now I have the ability to alter this timing track. Okay, and I'll go more into these controls in a moment. So let's move on to the next type of timing track here, the uh, within the fixed ones. So add timing track. Next one is metronome. This is almost the same as the one I've just created, but now we have the ability to specify an exact millisecond count. We can just click OK. It's telling me I can't use that one because, oh, there you go. It's, it's OK. It has worked. But you can see it's fixed again, and I could make it variable. The next one is empty. So if we create this, I'll just give it a name, call this one test. And what this has done is created a timing track that's ready for us to populate but has no content. So imagine I wanted to create a timing track that responded to the drum beats in a particular song. Two things I can do. If I can clearly see the drum beats on the waveform here, I can create, I can move to the appropriate position. I can press the T key, move to the next position, press the T key, next. Next, and I can create my own timing marks that match the drum beats or the guitar parts, whichever I'm interested in. Also, what I can do, I can play the sequence, and as the music plays, I can press the T at the appropriate part, and it will create a timing track at that point. I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to get the video blocked due to copyright. But invariably, when you do this, Sometimes some timing marks will be slightly out of position because your mind can't react and press the key soon enough. But that's not a problem because what you can do in now, we can go in and fine tune these timing marks. So, you know, if this one was slightly adrift, I can just click and hold with the left mouse and I can move it like this. I can move these. And another option, you see, we get the two arrows that allows us to move it like this. But if I move slightly, it turns to a hand, and this allows me to separate the timing tracks so I can pull it away. If I want to rejoin them, just pull them together again, and they will react together. 
If I want to delete a timing track, no problem. I like the timing track and the easiest way I can just hit the delete key or uh, you know, if you're more of a, a mouse user, you can right click and choose delete also and you can bring them together again. So that's all of the inbuilt timing tracks that we can use for any type of sequence. But we've also got the ones that are supplied by the Queen Mary plugins. And we look, we get all of this stuff. But what I suggest you do, if you're in, really interested in music theory, go and study all of these things and, you know, find out what's going to be of use to you. From my personal perspective, the main important ones are the things like here, bars. So I'll do a bar. You can go and search the internet for the beats per minute of the particular song that you're working with, and it will just help the plugin work. But if I'm honest, you don't need to. You just leave it at the defaults. And it will analyze the music and try and find out where the bars of that music. And all a bar is, if you've not studied music, is it's just a, a time period of music that a certain number of beats will happen during that time. And that all, de all depends on the time signature of the music. Generally, pop music is a 4x4 four four timing. So you'll have a beat like... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and the one, two, three, four in that case would form a bar. But there is other time signatures as well. Uh, and we can prove this now. If I actually go beats, I know this is a this particular song is in a four by four time signature. So if I now go add timing track, this time beats, it's now going to try and find those beats. And if we notice, we see here, if we look here, four beats, one, two, three, four, is making up a bar. So these two are useful uh, to, to use because, you know, you may want, you might think, okay, I want the effect to bounce on the beat, but I want, I want each effect to change, you know, after four bars. So you can have four bars at one type of effect, and then you can transition to another so your audience doesn't get too bored but the first thing i do when i use an automated timing track like this because you cannot guarantee i mean it's a complex algorithm that's going on here is i drop a string effect usually on a set of archers okay so i'm just going to put it on all large archers here first thing i need to do because it's on a group i'm going to change it to per model default so i can see the effect on a single arch and now i'm going to change it from bounce from left and because now this is actually doing two beats in one cycle i'm going to make this fill two beats on my sequence and what i'll tend to do is i will put a good amount of these across my sequence and the reason is it's not that I'm necessarily going to keep it like this it's just so now I can play that sequence and I can see if this beats track is on the money by watching this animation here and seeing if it's going beat 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 to the music all is not lost if it's not providing that it's out consistently across the entire timing which is a good chance we can adjust the entire timing track. And we do this by zooming out of the timing track. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume that it's a little bit out and I need to move the timing track a little bit to the right. So all I need to do is untick everything and I'm going to select that entire timing track. It all goes purple. I'll zoom in again so I've got a little bit more control. And I'll hold the shift key down while I press the left mouse button onto the timing track and now you can see I can move it left and right so I can think okay it was a little bit too early I'll just pull it this way just a few beats and away we go we can test again until we get it on the money so that's how we create timing tracks both manually and automated I'm now going to cover imagine you've spent a lot of time creating these timing tracks and you either want to keep them, save them for the future, or share them with someone else, 
you've got ability now if we right click we have got the ability to export a timing track it will give it a name okay so i'll just put it on my desktop and now we can select which of the timing tracks we want to include in this file and i can just click ok and the timing track is exported and we can prove this if i was to now import a timing track i can now select this open and you can see it's imported them it's given it a different name because i already had timing tracks on my timeline of the the name so it's called them millisecond one metronome one etc so you can see we can import and export timing tracks which is perfect for sharing with others so i'm only quickly now going to show you just what timing tracks are all about why we even bother with these the first thing is, is so we've got a visual cue of when we sh where we should be putting effects. So if I, you know, if I know that this beat here, I can drop an effect in, in place and it will automatically lock to that time period. Okay, so it makes it easy for placing effects and working out where effects should go to be, you know, to match the music. But also X Lights has a lot of functionality that's tied to beat tracks as well. So I've put an effect in here. I'll just select it like this. But what I can do is if any of these value curves here that you see, if I click on these, now I've covered these in a different tutorial, but you can create different timing tracks that, you know, different, uh, sorry, value curves that will affect that particular setting. But all of these have the ability to react to one of these timing tracks as well. So if I say here, timing track toggle, I can select a timing track and this value will change based on you know when these timing marks are hit okay so that's one element another is we can you know drop them something like a vu meter on uh, i'll drop it on stars or candy canes is fine so in this case imagine i wanted these candy canes flashing when it hit uh, i'll change it to when i hit these these beat marks here all i need to do is change this to pulse select the appropriate timing track in this case beats and every time it passes one of these timing marks that prop will flash to the music to flash to that particular timing mark okay now there's lots more functionality here that can react to timing tracks and i've covered the vu meter in a separate video so I think you've got enough information to get you started there with timing tracks. If not, have a look in the X Lights manual and you'll get more information. But until next time, see you later.